Out in windswept West Texas, basketball mania has blown into town like a cyclone. Brought here to Texas Tech University by perhaps the most famous and infamous college basketball coach in history, Bob Knight. Why do you think all this stuff swirls around you? I don't know. I wonder myself. I just sort of shake my head sometimes. You probably know Bob Knight as the chair-tossing, player-choking coach fired by Indiana University President Miles Brand two years ago. Unfortunately, there have been many instances in the last 17 weeks in which Coach Knight has behaved and acted in a way that is both defiant and hostile. Hostile? Defiant? You could say that. When my time on earth is gone and my activities here are past, I want they bury me upside down and my critics can kiss my ass. Bobby Knight wound up here in Lubbock, Texas, which might seem like basketball Siberia to some. But this land of no frills, hardworking, straight shooters might be just the place for a son of a gun like Bobby Knight to make a fresh start. So why didn't you just pack it in and go trout fishing? Well, you know, I thought about that, but I, I think more than anything else, <laughs> I really enjoy this game. Uh, it, it's a great game. And I really enjoy the machinations of the game, the, the uh, movement of players, the, the chess part. And he found a kindred spirit in David Schmidley, president of Texas Tech and a former basketball player here who jumped at the chance to hire an unemployed Hall of Fame coach. I didn't feel like I was sticking my neck out at all. I thought it was a, a no-brainer, a very yeah. smart decision. If I ever lost my temper and regretted it, Yes, I have. He's like all of us. It just so happens that almost everything he does gets noticed. You like the fact that Bob Knight wins games and graduates players, both of which Texas Tech was having a lot of trouble doing. I don't think there's anybody in the country anywhere that has done that better than Bob Knight. Bob Knight has taken the Red Raiders from a losing 9-19 and record last season to 23 and 8 this year, senior center Andy Ellis. He got us where we are right now, you know. With, without him, I don't know that we would be where we are, but he's a great coach, you know. He's devised a great system, you know. He's turned Andre into one of the best players in the country in a year, and so it's, I mean, he's done his job and he's made us all better players and a better ball club. Andre Emmett went from seven points a game last year to almost 20 this season, but first he had to cut his hair. The new coach is old school. Yeah, had braids, and as soon as he came in, he told us that we was gonna have a haircut policy or whatever. And as soon as I went home, I went to the barber shop. Do you fear him? No, nah, not at all. I think we're all more comfortable with him. You know, we see him on an everyday basis, and like we know him a little better than the outside public. One thing they know for sure, he hates to lose. You're competing to win, and there's also somebody going to lose, as my mother always was very fond of telling me. <laughs> oh, that's where it came from, huh? <laughs> Your mom <laughs> drilled that into you. Oh, no, I can, I can close my eyes and see my mom saying as I left the house, it didn't make any difference what I was going to do, whether it was football or basketball or baseball, that I was going to play. But now just remember, somebody has to lose. And you didn't want it to and be And I you. didn't want it to be me, no. Smart takes the shot. Indiana wins the championship. So Bob Knight wins. He played on a national championship team at Ohio State and as a coach won three national championships at Indiana and an Olympic gold medal. Before it's over, he may well be the winningest college coach of all time. But he's also won a gold medal in the chair toss the phone smash, the toe stomp, and in various kicking events. Although this season, there have been no incidents, domestic or foreign. You have no technicals this season. Are you gonna do anything about that in the no, coming games? I, if that's a myth that's been 
uh, promulgated. Uh, that's a pretty good word for a coach. Uh, <laughs> that's not too bad. Pr promulgated <laughs> by uh, uh, people in the, in the press uh, concerned with something less than total accuracy. Which is why he wrote a new book coming out later this month. The reason is right here, Knight, my story. You know, I thought it was time. Everybody has tried to tell my story over the years, and the only guy that knows, it's like bullfight critics row on row, crowd the enormous plaza full, and there's only one man there who knows, and he's the one who fights the bull. So this is a bullfighter story right here. In it, he answers the well-known litany of charges. Technical foul king. He says he ranked last in the Big Ten the past 10 years. Chair toss, did that, didn't hit anybody. Player choke, put hand on chest, not throat. Head butted player, accidental, not my fault. Kicked player, no, kick the chair. He says it's a pretty short list for 37 years of coaching. Someone who has such huge forces, both positive and negative, built into his personality is someone we look at and we say, how can this guy be so good at discipline and so good at teaching discipline and so completely unable to discipline himself? And Sports writer John Feinstein spent months with the coach for his bestseller, A Season on the Brink. He's too complex to describe in a single sentence or paragraph. Um, he is brilliant, driven, self-destructive, funny, angry. Uh, someone who at certain times you, you treasure the time you're around him and at other times you dread the time you're around him. And if Bob Knight was a pariah to officials at Indiana University, he's viewed as a godsend at Texas Tech. Applications are up. Uh, we'll have another record freshman enrollment. Uh, I mean, everything at this university is doing extremely well. And I think uh, Coach Knight has had something to do with that. His nickname is The General. And while some consider Knight a reincarnation of Patton, he considers himself first and foremost a teacher. What I want a player to have after he's finished playing with us is a feeling that he learned more out here and in the locker room and from his association with basketball than in any subject he took. Does the fact your mom was a teacher, does that have anything to do with yeah, that? Yeah, I think that, that uh, my mother was a great teacher, uh, an elementary teacher, and uh, I still have uh, uh, people come to me and tell me about having had my mom in oh, class. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it, it, there are always two things. Boy, your mom was a really good teacher, and she was tough. To the chirping of basketball shoes, Bob Knight circles the practice court like a hawk. Move. Start moving, Black. Move. Let's go. Pouncing on mistakes to be sure, but praising too. Good, Red. That's the way to cover, Marcus. Could it be the 61-year-old silver-haired grandfather has mellowed? Fans watching him these days might think so. What they see is, well, you know, he hasn't thrown anybody over the backboard today. What's wrong with this? Is it like a NASCAR race where they come to see uh, no, I don't Bobby know. Knight crash or something? I don't something? know, but uh, that just is never going to happen. Never? It could just be the general still has something to prove, if not to himself, then to his army of critics.